the first thing I did, I ordered the parts for the machine. The part list will come with the set of plans and it will tell you exactly what to get. You can use your part numbers that you're going to get to shop around online if you'd like. You don't have to. Obviously, I get every I get all my stuff from Surplus Center. They're knowledgeable and I feel like they're a good company to deal with. Um, they're not always the cheapest, but I have had really good luck with them. If there's a problem, they take care of it. All right, let's go through the boxes. The first one we're going to do is open this box. Take a look. Here's my receipts. And lots and lots of paper. At the very top here is all the hydraulic hoses for it. They appear to be, this is, this is my hydraulic hoses. Um, the, the list will be on the plans also. Let's just set those here. And then we have, uh, this is the top of the oil filter. This is a suction side oil filter. I, I figured it would be safer and that's what I've been using for years to always make sure even if there's some debris in the tank or anything, it can't get into the um, hydraulic pump itself. Cleanliness is very important with that hydraulic pump. Next item, let's see what we got here. Well, let's open it up and find out. Oh, all that for a hydraulic pump. This is our hydraulic pump. Comes with the little guards and everything on it. We'll get into that as we go. When we plumb it together, we'll definitely talk about the pump. Let's see, next we have our hydraulic oil filter. Everything is really well packed. I've never had anything come damaged from Surplus Center, so another good thing. They don't seem to hurry on that part. Handles for the valve body. This is our three bank, bank valve body. Um, let's get a better look at it. Now see, this can be set up with um, the handles. This can see, be set up with the handles in, in this direction, like that, or it can also be set up with the handles this way. That's why I'm gonna go ahead and move the handles, see, and put them like this, and plumb it together this direction so that I can have room to step into the backhoe. That will, we'll get into that more later, but for now, let's. Here is our fittings. I did, I did the fittings as I went, and when I'm all done with the backhoe build, we'll make sure that there are no fittings that you're gonna need. These are plumbed to match the hoses, which are pipe thread, but the um, valve body, and the cylinders themselves are actually SAE. And here's more fittings. Now we're going to get into our cylinders. Let's just we'll just look at one of them because that should that should be enough to get us started. We have one, two, three. This is the six-inch cylinder. So these are actually a uh, this is actually a six-inch cylinder rated for 3,000 psi. It's Prince Manufacturing. Um, it means that this six inch means that from the all the way retracted to all the way extended, it goes six inches. And this is for the bucket. Let's look at the next one. They're a little bit heavier. And this is our uh, Boom and Crowd cylinders are 12 inch. So this means from full extension to full retraction is 12 inches. 
and we have our fittings, we have our cylinders, we have all of our parts that we need to get started. All the hoses are 3,000 PSI hose. I'm only going to run it at two, probably set the pump when I'm done with it, and run the system at 2,000 PSI, because that's usually all. Um, if you go above that, then you're, you're going to put a lot of stress in everything, and plus, you don't have enough weight to hold it still when it gets over that amount. This is our three gallon tank. This is as small as I could find, which it means that it's three gallons of usable. Um, it, it's always down from the top a little bit. Um, a good rule of thumb on these are um, however many gallons per minute the pump is, is the size that the tank should be. This pump that's on this one, the one I'm building, is only 1.5 gallons per minute, but I could not find a 1.5 gallon tank, so I went ahead with the three. If whoever's building it decides to go with a larger system, this will also work for that, because there was another build with a three gallon per minute pump. Anyways, this is our tank. I also have a, a power plant for this. <clears throat> it could go two ways now. I'm, I have, it's got a setup for a gas engine and you can also swap it over to a two horsepower electric motor. Now a two horsepower electric motor is about the maximum that a 110 volt 20 amp circuit will carry. It'll, it'll carry a little more, but you have to have a really heavy duty extension cord and it works really well. Okay, this is the two horsepower electric motor. Let me pull it out of here. You have a look at it. The it's um US motor. Let me I'll get a close up of that after a second. Um, so this is going to swap with the the gas engine. The gas engine is, is a three horsepower gas engine. Now this is about comparable to a four horsepower gas engine. Um, any or a two horsepower engine would work. The the capacitors are allowing this motor to start under a heavy load. That's why it's for a compressor, but it works just fine. Now let's look at our RPMs. It is 3450. 3450 it's a running about the same speed as the gas engine so see everything here is comparable in reality this motor is actually um, running easier on the back hose than the gas engine is it actually has a little more power than that gas engine so anyways when you get to that point this is what we're going to be using and I'm also going to do a gas engine I just don't have that yet but I will get that before we get to the finish of the build. I think that should be everything we're going to need to get started. Next thing we'll, we'll go through the steel. I'll do real quick through the steel and then we'll be able to uh, get started building.